Welcome everybody. I'm Holly Clear with the Social Media Advisor. Today I am really excited to share with you a really special friend of mine. Her name is Valerie Morris and she's with Tintero Creative. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So we have the unique experience of being a part of a social media group of women and uh, Colorado Women in Social Media, hashtag CSW, Colorado Women in Social Media, CSWSM. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a really great set of letters to just roll off the tongue there. Um, <laughs> but so I was really excited because um, this year I'm going to be focusing on interviewing and showcasing some of the people in my life. And Valerie was the, the fortunate one to be the first one on my list. Um, so thank you so much for joining. <laughs> and I really just, I wanna talk about her so you guys can get a chance to know her and what she does and what um, what makes her tick and her passion behind social media. So if you have some questions, feel free to type those in the chat box. We'll see if we have some time to get those answered. And I do have some fun things in here that I'm gonna be sharing as well. <laughs> so um, Valerie, how in the world did you get started in social media? Well, um, it's a, I actually, uh, I'm part of that generation that um, I remember the day Facebook came to my school. Uh, I was in college when Facebook first came out. So um, <laughs> that's been kind of fun to watch social media, like go from MySpace and like AOL Instant Messenger um, which was what I mainly used. And then Facebook came and everyone got it. And then you went through this like phase where it's like, I don't want to be friends with my parents, you know, once it, they opened it up to everyone. Um, and then, you know, beyond <laughs> Facebook, there's like 5,000 other social media networks now. So it's, it's been really fun to watch, but um, I actually went to school for architecture and um, where did you that's, go? What my, that's what my degree is in. Uh, it's this small private school outside of Chicago called Judson University. And um, like literally my, all of my classes were with like the same 30 people. So oh. um, I really got to know uh, those people. And it, it's amazing that our, I enjoy our women's group so much because I really enjoyed going to school with all men. <laughs> there were like two or three other women in my class. Men are just like no drama, you know, they just, they're so simple to work with, but yeah. Well, I they have that boxes, right? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. They like compartmentalize things. Yeah. And, so they yeah. Can't have more than one box open. So we've got yeah. the, the no drama box. We've got the nothing box. We've got the focusing on work box. We've got the football box. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, but that's a whole nother story, but yeah, I worked, uh, I, I loved, I loved school. It was so stimulating for me. And I think looking back on it, how demanding the architecture degree is at so many schools, but, um, at my school too, uh, the ability to be managing so many different skill sets and classes and just look, just workload, um, mm. really set me up to be very successful as an entrepreneur and as my own, you know, as a business owner. Um, and so honestly, when I got out of school, I was bored. I was sitting in cubicles for like eight hours a day drawing bathrooms and like, you know, the fixtures oh and the, the towel bars. And I was so bored. So anyways, hilarious. Say, I, I found ways to reinvent my design background into working, uh, doing graphic design. And then partly because of my age, uh, the agency that I got a job at threw me into all the social media stuff. And I loved it. And so from there on, I went with the, you know, the digital marketing direction and I haven't looked back since. So, so I love that because I, I think we all, all of, all of us who specialize in social media, online marketing, not all of us went to school just for that. Well, you it know, wasn't and, a thing um, then. <laughs> you couldn't go to school for social media. <laughs> it's crazy, really. Um, okay. So in your business, you, you support clients, mm -hmm. uh, locally and I'm sure across the nation as well. Um, what are your top three services? Uh, so social media management by far is like the biggest bread and butter for our business. We essentially we're like ghostwriters for people's social media. So, um, we do a lot with, um, you know, 
the, the main platforms. There's a few obscure ones that we don't do, but alongside that, usually people want to incorporate their email marketing into that. And so that's another big piece. Um, and then the other huge chunk is uh, really on a copywriting standpoint, and that overlaps with social media a lot. And it also overlaps with websites a lot. So we do a lot of web copy and we do a lot of uh, blogging. So, um, yeah, I currently have about 10 articles that I need to write over the next four or five days for myself and for clients. And, uh, you know, that's probably what I'll be doing tomorrow when, you know, I know people aren't emailing me and I'll be distracted. I can just shut everything down and not stress about it. So, um, Brain dump. yeah, so I, I've, I've really developed, uh, into doing a ton of, of writing. So, Yeah. So do you write for all of your clients or do you find that you would like to bring in people that have different voices for some of your accounts? So uh, I do have a couple people that help me write for some of my clients and then, but I'm still involved in like the editing and some of the publishing side of it. So I still get to kind of have my, you know, have my say on if something needs to change, but um, I've been really happy with the people that I've got helping me. So um, Yay. yeah, I, I'm so thankful for her help. And I, and I do think taking the time to find people that, um, really can do a good job. It makes a difference. I, I probably needed to hire someone a long time before to do certain things. And I kind of held off just because I didn't want to let the <laughs> quality suffer and I didn't want to just hire anybody. So I'm kind it's of, hard as an entrepreneur to let some things go. Well, it is. And, but at the same time, like I, hiring somebody that's going to, you know, waste your time and you're going to have to go in and fix a lot of stuff on the back end. That's not, that's not worth it. So um, I would call that a higher fail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, it's, it's been a good, good experience, but there, there are a number of clients. Um, I actually do a lot of work for other marketing agencies that don't understand content as much as I do or understand the value of content. Like a lot of us social media gals understand it and find value in. And so, um, you know, a lot of, I, I do stuff for a couple agencies that are very data driven and just ad based. And so just more on the programmatic side. And so, um, mm. they brought me on to essentially write all of their articles and their email newsletters and all that. So that's awesome. Yeah. It's fun because I'm, I'm writing really about topics that I already need to learn about for myself. So yes. I, I learn a lot in the process. That is the thing. You, you got to do research if you don't, obviously, if you're going to write valuable content, right? And um, you, you can't know it all, but being able to provide copy that's, that's worthy and interesting and informative. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so Deborah has a question. So... What would you say writing copy, i.e. for websites, mm. is different than writing a blog post? Uh, well, blog posts, I so I really believe that, um, uh, let me think about this, content marketing involves a whole number of things. And so your blogs help support your social media and your email newsletters. And your email newsletters help support your, and get the word out about your blogs. And so the blogging side tends to be a little bit more social and a little bit more intriguing or conversational. Um, you can get away with more on that end. Uh, for web copy, I find that it's a little bit more stiff. It's a little bit more structured. Um, and then for both, probably more on the website copy side of things, but for both, I find that, you know, you have to write it with kind of those keywords that you're wanting to rank well for. And so being strategic about what you're writing about and how you're structuring the article itself, I think is, is huge. So, I mean, I think about it, I think it's important to think about on both types of writing, but website copy, obviously, I feel like has a little bit more weight on that. And that's only because it's just a little bit more static in nature, I guess, less conversational. So. Yeah. Well, I love that you incorporate that search component in all the words that you you're talking about as far as the website versus blogs. And um, because all of that does play a part and we want to please the Google, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and I think, you know, content marketing is really a long term investment. 
you know, you're, you're working to build your, your tribe and your, your group of, you know, loyal followers. And one of those loyal followers is Google and it takes time. It's not going to be an overnight thing to be ranking well on Google. So, um, and you never know who's competing for that same space. And so if you're, if you've got a long-term vision and you're building authority with Google, you know, you're able to weather those storms more when other competitors come into that same space. So, yeah. yes, absolutely. Oh, and your, your copy, let me just tell you is always off the charts. So, oh, well, thank you. I love reading your work. <laughs> <laughs> So that brings me to the question, um, what are the top three industries that you work with? Uh, so yeah, a lot of, like I said, a lot of ad agencies tend to want to work with me and, um, you know, there's definitely some potential friction, you know, people feeling like I'm writing stuff for their competitors. Um, so I'm pretty careful to only work, like I have some that only target specific niche industries as their main client or their service offering is slightly different. Um, but it is interesting that I'm kind of attracting that because usually those businesses, they're so busy. I mean, they could probably write it, but they're so busy that they just don't want to think about it. Um, and then um, I do a ton with private uh, private practices. So I do a lot in the dental world. I do a lot in the optometry world. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Little known fact, I, uh, I for a couple years, uh, actually, as I was building up my business, I worked at an optometry office, um, which was really nice because it was like a day job that I didn't really bring home with me. And there was no conflict of interest. And so I'd work there by day and I was building up my business on the side. And then I went down to like three quarters time, quarter time with my business, down to half time, all this. And I slowly weaned down to being full time with my business. But I know how to adjust glasses. I could fit you for progressive lenses, like all this stuff. So. That's cool. Yeah, random facts. But um, yeah, so uh, I do a lot with, you know, like chiropractors and all that um, with their social media presence. Um, and uh, yeah, and then um, I do a lot with nonprofits. And probably the biggest one, which was so fun uh, last week. Um, so I do a lot with Young Life and I do stuff with people on the East Coast, uh, down in the South, locally, all that. And um, they had, this was so cool. And I watched it all on social media all week long. They had a all staff conference and there were 5,000 of them, 5,000 staff members that came in <laughs> from all over the world to Orlando. Cause that's like one of only two places that they can actually meet and get everyone together. And um, I was watching it via Instagram and Facebook and everything. Um, they had people like, um, what's their names? Uh, uh, the Gaines on HGTV, the, gosh, the people. Oh, the twins? The, no, the couple from Texas, uh, Fixer Upper. Oh, yes. Um, uh, the oh, husband there, that. the husband there did Young Life growing up. And so they sent like this special greeting. George Bush like sent this special greeting. They brought in all sorts of like big name celebrities and yeah, it was really fun to watch because there's a lot of people that have been touched by that, that organization. So, so yeah, I do a lot with them and, and with their, with That's their really so much fun to be able to celebrate that and watch them just well, totally flourish. And it's a nice mix because so many of my clients are for profit and it's nice to be to have that balance of doing something for an organization that their focus on social media is simply to share their mission and share like what they're doing with the resources that they get. And so they're using social media to help um, just increase that morale with donors and with people who are, you know, spending time with them and, you know, giving their time and all that. So it's a nice balance for me. And it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to get paid for it too. So <laughs> it's not completely pro bono. <laughs> you know, I mean, like we look at. I guess when when we started off as social media people, it was it was a job, right? But now it's more of a, it's a fulfilling life experience. Mm -hmm. Yep. How cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I didn't know that about your your particular industries. I, I knew about nonprofits, mm -hmm. um, but not the others. So yeah. that was really cool. For, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so now I'm going to ask a tricky question. Okay. 
Um, what do you feel is the biggest misconception with social media? Um, gosh, I don't, I don't know if I have a good answer for this. Um, there's so many out there. I think, um, one of the biggest ones that I notice a lot is just, um, people think that it doesn't take any time to do social media. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, it, there's so much strategy that gets, goes into it. Um, and th as I'm saying this, I'm thinking of another misconception is, and I think it's one that's evolved over time is that, um, is that anyone can do it, especially teenagers. Um, you know, we have, I come across a lot of business owners that they're like, oh, well, my college student can, can run this for me instead. And you're like, uh, do, are they doing anything with any strategy? Like, do they really know what they're doing? Yeah, they can post on Instagram, but do they have a plan? So um, that's one of the big things that I've seen. <laughs> and the 12-year-old social media manager. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit that 12-year-olds, actually a two-year-old taught me some things about my iPhone last year that I didn't know. And I was like, a two-year-old is teaching me how to use my iPhone? This is ridiculous. Oh, but, my goodness. But I think, yeah, like you're saying, like there's, you know, social media is changing. And the more marketing focused and the more abilities that we have with marketing on social media, the more strategy that needs to go into place and the more you need to think about how does social media fit into you know the other things that we have going on are we implementing it with our advertising our our email marketing our you know print marketing how is it all integrating and using social media together with all of those i think is is key yeah when I completely agree with you. And we've got some really good feedback as far as responses to that particular question. Um, someone says, is social media is too easy, right? Which is very similar to the whole 12 year old conversation. Um, Deborah Jason, uh, that was Ra Rachel, by the way. Mm -hmm. And Deborah says, I hear most people complain that it takes too much time. Uh, yeah, I think once they dig in, they realize how much time it takes and then they're like yeah. oh but when they go to want to pay for someone to do it they think oh well it should only take you what like five minutes to do <laughs> you know when it takes me an hour you know so yeah well i mean there's strategy behind it you've got to have an editorial calendar you have to know what you're talking about before you post you're not just sharing random things without any kind of purpose or strategy yep um you know even how you post I see business people all the time posting articles to their page without any blurb. Yeah. Give me something. Yeah. At least tell me what you thought about the article exactly. that you're sharing, right? Exactly. Uh, Rachel says social media is just as important as training your staff to serve a customer in person. And it takes, it takes as much time. Yeah, exactly. Um, Amy says, no matter what, we are professionals and it's hard to get paid as such. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. And I think, you know, a huge piece is just establishing that value and, and the importance of what you're doing. Um, I, when you start getting into the strategy piece, a lot of business owners will just like, they'll glaze over and they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is too overwhelming for me to think about, you know? And so then they start to see. So if you, you establish that like level of like what you're going to be providing on top of them, because yeah, the reality is anyone could post to Facebook. I mean, even my 80 year old grandfather can do that, but you know, doing it strategically and doing it well and having, having it make sense in the big picture, you know, and uh, the other thing is consistency is the biggest thing. I mean, that's probably why I have a business today is that most people will do it fine for a few days but they don't have a long-term strategy and they don't execute that long-term strategy. So. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it is all about educating the people that we're working with on what, what the value truly is, mm -hmm. what effort does get put into it. And, and especially with monitoring, that can be a real time task Yeah, and monitoring as one individual or even as a team, you've got to have systems in place. And, you know, a, a solopreneur isn't necessarily going to just be able to do that on their own. Mm -hmm. They like doing what they do for a reason. Well, or even and, big organizations can't, you know, mid-sized organizations, I've found that they aren't at the point where they want to have someone full-time doing it. But 
you don't, there's so many hoops to jump through and people to run things by that sometimes they get just kind of stuck in the weeds. So they need someone to come in and say, this is what we're doing. <laughs> and if you yeah. have a problem with it, you tell me, otherwise it's happening. <laughs> Yes, and there's a trust relationship yep. in that. You know, you've got to be able to trust me to adequately support you. Um, very similar to uh, some things that Rachel was saying. You know, give me the opportunity to build that trust with you, so that way I can relieve a burden and save you some time, so you can focus on what you enjoy doing. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> then, how do you prepare your your clients to work with you? What is something that you do teach them? Oh. I don't think this was on the list of questions prior to yes, it was. It was near the bottom. Not read all the details. Um, uh, 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 okay. Um, so, what did I teach my clients? Well, it was worded slightly different. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, something I teach my clients and perhaps work with me. Okay. This is something that I started doing about halfway into my journey so far. And I hands down have agreements. And part of it is because I have been burned by client experiences in the past. And so I always send before we do any sort of ongoing management or any sort of big project. I mean, like little stuff here and there, no big deal. But I send them an email. I have a whole agreement that has all sorts of things, even down to like how quickly can you expect me to respond to you? Um, oh, yes. and when you can expect to respond to me, I've had people emailing me on a Sunday night or I'm sorry, Sunday morning at 1am and then sending me a, a follow-up email at like two in the afternoon on Sunday to make sure that I got it. And then texting me at seven o'clock that night because I hadn't responded to the two emails. And I'm like, buddy, I don't work on Sundays. Like, that is by rule of thumb, I don't work. Or if I am working, you rarely see an email from me. I'm just like cranking away on my computer doing my own thing. Um, but I think just setting those expectations up beforehand yes. gives people an idea of like, okay, well, you know, sh she's going to be doing X, Y, and Z for me, but she also expects X, Y, and Z from me in order to be successful. And I think if you set those expectations up from the beginning, it makes things work so much better. I love that. First of all, the first thing you mentioned, I mean, just having the agreement, mm -hmm. everything in writing. So there's no, there's, there's no question, no room for question. Yeah. Yep. And then the boundaries. Yeah. yeah. You have to have that or else, you know, you I, life. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and that's, and honestly, that's why I have, that's why I'm in business is because I want to have balance in life. You know, life has been kind of crazy for us lately. Um, which some of you guys that know me know, um, but the ability to be able to carve out a few hours of my day to roll with the punches when things are coming through, like that's, that's gold to me. You know, a couple years ago, my husband had to be in the, in the hospital for three, three or four days unexpectedly. And I was able to work from the hospital room. Um, I wasn't nearly as productive, but my clients really didn't see any sort of, you know, major hiccup in the road. Um, I just stopped all my meetings or networking or anything that week. And I just focused on doing what I absolutely needed to do and then was able to get back into things. But for me, that balance is huge. So, yeah. And getting an agreement in place for those people that are out there that are new, new to business and they're like nervous about getting their first few clients and wonder, you know, worried that it's going to, deter someone from signing on, I haven't ever had that issue. If you just set this out as this is, and I call it an agreement, I don't call it a contract. And to be honest, like if people, you know, sorely abuse it uh, or abuse it a little bit, I, I'd say, I don't really make a big stink, but it's there if they really start abusing it and then I can go back to them. And I've rarely had ever, ever had issues. Um, Long term, I agree with you. getting them signed on as a client, I've never had an issue with putting an agreement in place. So, do it from the beginning. If you're just starting out, do it from the beginning. So, and I, I'll add to that. I think it makes sense to to have a lawyer look at it mm -hmm. and make sure that legally, based off of where you're located, these are the things and the correct expectations legally that you can have yep. in that document for that agreement. Yep. Okay, so we got a question from Rachel. Do you find clients like to understand your processes, such as through project management or sharing calendars? 
so they can understand the investment? Uh, general rule of thumb, I think because I work with a lot of doctors, the answer would be no. Um, to be honest, most doctors that I work with could care less. They just want to make sure that it's getting taken care of. Um, half the time I send stuff over for approval from them. Actually, no, it's probably more like 75% of the time that I send anything over to for a doctor to approve. It comes, they just don't respond. And so what I've done is I've set into, into place this policy where I say, you have three to five business days or whatever. I set a time limit to get back to me about this. Otherwise, it is going live. Because if I waited around for, for you know, that personality type to get back to me, they just wouldn't. Um, other people, I mean, it's part of reading people, you know, there's going to be, t there's definitely clients where I have to spell out the process more, but because I work with so many doctors, yeah, they don't really, they're so busy dealing with patients and putting out fires with insurance and stuff like that. They don't really care. <laughs> That's a really good point. It, it is kind of interesting in this age of, um, email and all these variety of technology where we can all communicate in, in all these different manners that when I learned email mm -hmm. in my very first office job, it was, it was not a thing where you were allowed to not respond. You had to at least communicate that you'd received it. Mm -hmm. And even if I needed a couple other days to uh, answer questions or whatever, every email got a response and that's just not what people do anymore. No, they don't. So I've given people the option. If you don't respond to me, I'm taking that as your response. And it's worked, and I think that's a great tool to worked, be able to add to the tool belt. It's worked really well for me. I mean, because it gives people the chance to, like, glance at it. And if they have a really big problem, they let me know. Otherwise, it's no big deal. Yep, I agree. Um, I posted a question here that I thought I thought was a question from Amy, but it was just a comment. But um, actually, I'm going to turn it into a question um but what is a common mistake made by social media managers this was not on the oh, thing but yeah. i think it's important to talk about i think time management is a huge thing uh you know i struggle with it a lot um and being i, I guess knowing yourself and knowing what your strengths and your weaknesses are and so for me I really have had to force myself to block out time to take care of my own business, um, to work ahead on my client stuff to the level that I want to, so that I'm not having to stress about it as much. And so, because we have to, I think that there's a lot you can plan when you're a social media manager and there's a lot you can't plan that you have to be going on regularly and checking out what's organic and what's not. But the stuff that you can plan, like you need to make a calendar, you need to figure out what works best for you. Like I'm a morning person. So for me, getting up and doing a ton before people start emailing me works so much better than staying up late at night. I mean, my the quality would go way down if I did that way. So just knowing yourself and 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 forcing yourself to have that schedule once you know what works for you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. And especially having the ability to, to work from home mm -hmm. in some cases that we can get trapped. It's hard. And not live some actual life. You know, we're, we're, we're working, we're paying the bills and for goodness sakes, let's take a minute and be present mm -hmm. and enjoying that. Right. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to ask you something fun. Okay. All right. If you were a superhero, <laughs> who would you be and why? Okay. Uh, I don't really know anything about superheroes. I'm just being very honest. I, I mean, like I know of Superman, Spider-Man. Um, so I'm going to spin this into a different question if that's okay. All right. I'm fine with that. Um, because recently I had an icebreaker question. I was asked what, if I was going to live on, like be part, live and be part of a TV show, what, which one I would want to live on. And okay. I love that. Part of. And I have two. One I think would be um, Big Bang Theory. I think that would be hilarious. Oh my <laughs> and it would probably totally see you on Big Bang Theory. At the same time, it would probably like drive me insane to be around people like that um, that were so neurotic <laughs> about certain things. 
Um, and then the other one is like completely opposite, but Downton Abbey. I just think it would be the coolest thing to live in that time period, <laughs> those clothes and all that. So that's right. awesome. anything about superheroes. <laughs> Well, that's totally a superhero thing. You could be dressed as a Downton Abbey character living in that time, but with Sheldon. And then, you know. <laughs> living with Sheldon? Nah. And he could be your roommate. Uh, you and your husband's roommate. Well, you know, I do okay. like agreements, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what do you do to treat yourself? Because, you know, we work so hard and there's got to be something that you do to treat yourself. What would that be? Um, I get massages. I, mm. that's my, I think I've gotten a manicure maybe once in my life, pedicures four or five times my whole life. Massages, if I can make it work, I try to do it monthly. It's just, it's, oh. it's, it's so good. Cause like you're not connected to anything. You're forced to just stop. You know, you, you, you can't be responding to, to anything on social media. You can't be responding to email, none of that. And, um, I just think it's just good for mental health and it feels good. So, Oh, it does. Well, it's good for mental health and physical health because yeah. if you're not getting a massage, you're tense and then mm -hmm. other things stop working properly. Yep. So it's an all around. That's awesome. Yeah. I love massage. I actually really love hot stone massages. Yes, I do too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my main massage therapist just started using hot stones, like, just as an automatic thing, and I don't even have to pay extra. I'm like, oh, this is nice. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. She's You're a spoiled she's rotten. A lone tree if anyone ever wants a good I actually have two really good ones, so. Oh, I'm totally jealous. I wish I could have one every single time. I, I wish I could have one every day, but I can't afford that time-wise or money-wise, so. <laughs> I I know. So like mine is I love bacon, I love chocolate, nice. and so just you know, some downtime, getting some cuddles, bring me some bacon, bring me some chocolate, and I'm good to go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> do you um at, since this is a new year, do you do yeah. a word each year? Do you have a quote or something that you focus on each year? Uh, no, not really. I, I, I'm not really big on like setting new year's resolutions. I mean, I'm all for like business plans and like having vision and goals for my business, yes. but, um, I don't feel like January one is the only time you can do that. And so for me, it's like an ongoing thing. Um, I'm always, you know, I was actually talking with my husband about this this morning, um, that there's a difference between, Someone was talking about the words happy versus content and mm. almost putting content, you know, in this very special box. And I, I, sometimes I get frustrated with the word content because it's like, I don't know if I, I think, anyways, I have a hard time with it. But what made me realize the hard time I have with it is that I see being content and being complacent as two different things. And so... I'm just a driven person. So yeah, but recently um, a, a big phrase for me that I've been mulling over over and over is the phrase um, just because I can doesn't mean I should. And oh. in our culture in America, we have a lot of things that we can do. And as a business owner and in social media, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, but that doesn't mean that we should. There's so many things that could vie for our time, but there, it doesn't mean that that's the best thing that we should be doing with our time. So that's one thing that I'm really trying to keep cemented in my mind when those shiny objects start sparkling around me and, um, you know, just taking the time to remind myself that of the goals that I do have and not get distracted. That's really good. And it, not only as far as goals, but conversations, because mm -hmm. in social we're way too excited to share opinions. Mm -hmm. We can share, but is it really a good idea? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. There's, we have a lot of liberties and I think because of that, we mentally feel entitled that we should be able to, to do all these things and it doesn't necessarily mean it's productive. So. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, it's so fun to learn more about you this morning. I know. So who, who, would have, who would have thought that you could learn even more about me after we hung out that one day at the TED Talks all day long? <laughs> it's crazy. I know. That was that was the best day. That was a really um, fun day. Those of you who have never been to a TED Talk, you should really look into going to a local one or watching them online, at least just to start. But being present in that environment was insane. Yeah. It was just fun to like get out of your own element and <sighs> yes. Yeah. It'd be amazing. Around, be around like minded people too. Yes. I, I can't say I really like of all the varieties of sparkling water I got to try that day. Yeah, but, but the beverages were in eh. <laughs> they needed they needed they needed some better options. Yeah, <laughs> but it was a great experience. Maybe, and I had maybe we'll awesome just have time. to all bring our own next time we come. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. I am going to. Okay, so I, we do you have a couple more minutes? Yeah, I'm fine. Honestly, I thought this went till noon, so I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to give us at least no. An hour. I I completely understand. <laughs> so we've got a couple of people on here that we're familiar with. There's Deborah Jason, there's mm -hmm. Tracy Malone, there's um, Rachel Moore, there's Gail is on here. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Miss Gail. Um, Amy, all sorts of people that we know. So it's your chance. I'm going to unlock it. we got two spots. Let's jump in. Open seat. So anyone that wants to join um <laughs> First one to go. Let's see who should we. In ha ha! Welcome, Rachel. Hey, how are hey, you guys? Rachel. Nobody jumped in, so I'll just break the ice so people can know they can jump in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have one more open seat. So, Amy, I got dressed just for this. Like, I got all dressed up with nowhere to go except Blab. So, you know, it's a nice. Although it feels good to be all officially dressed. I got people um, all day. <laughs> Supposed to have a client lab today, but he's ill with the crud, and that does no one any good. So, mm. so yeah. I just and then I went to the DMV. So this is my wingy hair. I don't know if I like this fluffy stuff. Going on, yeah, you're still trying to figure out the short hair thing, huh? I am. I am. Oh, sweet, another person. Oh, look, there's Deborah Jason. <laughs> She's coming. She's coming. She's coming. Come. Yeah! Yay. Hey, Deborah. Hi, How are you? How are things up in Boulder? Hi, ladies. How are you? Are you in Boulder or are you in Hawaii? Oh, things in Boulder are beautiful. Oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to Hawaii um, on February 18th. I'll be heading nice. to Hawaii. So uh, I'm looking oh. forward to that, too, because I'll be near the ocean, which, you know, we don't have here. <laughs> yep. Kauai is my favorite. So island. nice to see you and nice to hear you ladies chat. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Well, you, you know, that was my home for 10 yeah. years. Sure. I'm about to jump on my own lab in a bit. So I just wanted to jump in here and connect with you girls. Yeah. Since I haven't been able to get down to Denver lately. how far Boulder feels mm -hmm. sometimes. And yet when you actually go up there, it's really not that far. No. No. Well, and so this is interesting that you two joined us today because um, you both have labs. Do you want to talk about your uh, your labs that you host? Um, maybe we'll start with Rachel, and we can go to Deborah. Sure. Um, yeah, I actually uh, was just sure. crafting my landing page on my website for my blab ground rules, uh, which goes with my uh, blab post about. Uh, best practices for blabs because there are some, but um, no, I uh, I started a laugh and learn. Am I I'm echoing? I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, but uh, I started a laugh and learn blab series for 2016. So each Tuesday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, I get on. And uh, Holly was my first person. Uh, we actually were on a Tuesday. We were on a Thursday um, as an anomaly, but so she was my first who's who in social media. Uh, I also do topics, uh, that's first Tuesday of each month, second Tuesday is what's happening, so that could almost be weekly or daily because it changes all the time. Uh, third Tuesday is when and where to do social media, so when should I post, where should I post, on which platform. And then uh, fourth Tuesday is a how-to. So, that's what awesome. I do. That's a lot. Oh my yeah, goodness. I love that. 
I love it way too much. <laughs> really? And what about you, Deborah? You have a show that you do. Um, mine is, let's see, hold on. Find my visual here. Nice. Mine's the marketing blast. I love it. Really cool. Um, so um, I was doing it every Friday. And then we had Christmas and we had New Year's and we've had all those holidays. So now it's averaging wow. about twice a week. Um, and usually mine is at this time. It's about 1130. But today I'm doing it at 1 o'clock with a colleague who's talking about client attraction strategies. And next week you all know my guest who will be Andrea Val. Um, so I bring on people to talk about the art of engaging and the importance of building relationships in order to grow their business. So we cover a lot of social media topics and marketing topics. We've covered um, speaking and using speaking as a marketing tool because, as you know, I'm a speaker, and so I love to promote that. And like I said, it's on Fridays, usually at 11.30 Mountain Time. And Valerie, you have I, and a I do. you doing as well. I've, I've dabbled in Blab, and that's one of the things for 2016 that I really wanted to get consistent with. Um, part of it was, um, uh, so the concept for, for the blab show is, uh, unboxing your business. And I really feel like there's a lot of labels and walls that people put up. They put us in boxes or we put ourselves in boxes. And, um, so we're just going to be talking through some of that. And, um, if you want to check out at tinterocreative.com on my blog, I, I talked about kind of the vision behind it. And a lot of that comes from my story with being in the architecture world. Um, but we're actually having Rachel, who's like right here on my screen. Um, she's going to be uh, featured on, uh, on the show next Wednesday. So the link is right over there in your chat window. That's Whatever, so I don't know excited. Where I'm excited. See, yeah. I just love that we're all doing this. It is because you just learn more. We see each other, but, you know, you can learn more when you're in this format. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you. It's true I'm story. Happy. It's true. It's a true story. <laughs> well, hey, I will well, hop and on. Blab is somebody great else wants to day. hop on, okay? Is that, is that cool? Because somebody else might want to hop on. Yep, that's cool. Yeah, Thanks let's just stop it here. here. See you later, well, Rachel. Bye, darling. <laughs> bye, darling. So we have an open seat. <laughs> darling. I think, um, where did, oh, I think we lost her. I thought Michelle was here. Or Amy should oh, jump Michelle, on. Michelle had to jump off to a meeting, it looked like. Oh. Well, Amy says she's um, she's not and dressed her pajamas. for the camera. Her PJs. <laughs> oh, look at <laughs> Deborah, I'm not sure if you've met our friend, Laura Pence. She's a social savvy geek. And uh, No, I haven't met her. She is so new to now. the Colorado Women in Social Media. As of like what? Thirteen members now. Months ago, I think. Oh, that's maybe. awesome! Yeah, she's trying oh, to come on. So she's trying. <laughs> <laughs> so where is she in Colorado? Is she in Denver, Boulder, North Glen? Uh, I, uh, if I remember correctly, it's it's uh, Southeast Denver area, right, Laura? Oh, I'm in uh, oh, yeah. Centennial. I live. Like right oh, by okay. Ikea. Yeah, but where in Centennial? Centennial is one of those weird towns. <laughs> it's, it used to be Inglewood. It's on the corner of uh, Yosemite and County Line, where I live. Oh, okay. Nice. Right yeah. off the highway. Yeah. Well, well I can Laura. Laura. Noble from my house. <laughs> so, Laura, Deborah came, what was it, like six months ago or longer, shorter? Oh, God, it wasn't that long, was it? I don't know. Um, I, she came and spoke I at our, our group. I want to say maybe it was October. October. Maybe I September think. or October. Okay. Um, and that's when I came to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Deborah, um, seriously? I think it was seriously, September. I read that whole book in like a weekend. Well, that's awesome. So I'll ask you again, post a review on Amazon. You know, I tried. Please. And I think I actually did, but it was under my husband's name. But oh well, maybe oh. that that might be why you don't think I did it. But <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Then. Double check though. So nice to meet you, Laura. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. 
So, so Laura, you're all back on the Mad Lab series yeah. also? I did. Are what? you going to be doing a Blab series also? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a training coming up? I do. I have a. Um, it is a all day workshop this upcoming Tuesday. Wow. From eight a.m. to six p.m. I am one of four instructors. It's uh, Peter Kent who wrote SEO for Dummies, all eighteen versions, editions. Um, and Dan Stratford, who uh, is an SEO expert as well, and Dave Carlson. And then I'll be doing the social media portion, which is 90 minutes of how to market effectively using social media. That's awesome. It's definitely so, a topic that needs all to be long. A time. I know. Well, do you have any questions you'd like to ask Valerie? Oh. oh. I have so many questions, but we're I know we're, ha lunch. we're having lunch next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that that um, works out conveniently. <clears throat> it does. Now thinking of like, hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, um, this has been amazing, Valerie, and you are just such a beautiful spirit, and. Mm -hmm. So compassionate, and I love your focus for your clients and all of the services that you offer. And the, it's interesting because the unique thing about being a part of Colorado Women in Social Media is we all have different specialties, and we service. We I will not say we service people. We provide support. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Um, we provide support to people in so many different ways for so many different industries, and it's amazing um, because not all businesses have the same needs or desires and um, same thing with the marketing. So thank you for uh, supporting the, the businesses that you do support and um, for joining me and taking the time to do that. And yeah, it was a pleasure. <laughs> you're just a rock star, fun. man. I love you. I love you inside and out. And it's been amazing to, to get and walk this journey with you. Yeah. Well, thanks Holly. So, Appreciate it. Do you have a tagline or anything specific that you Want to share with everybody before we close out? Tintero Creative, um, unboxed business, doing something different with um, with Black. I, I don't. I love your topic. I don't really have like a main tagline. I just, I'm I'm big on authenticity, and I think that that's that's what businesses need to share on social media. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's one of my goals for 2016 is come up with a tagline. But then I have to remember the tagline, and uh, my memory is not well, so good right now. It's just a lot of work right there. It's just a lot of work. It really is. Once you publish it, you can remember That's it, true. Sure. That's true. <laughs> that is very true. We'll remind you. <laughs> So everybody, be sure to follow Valerie in all of the places that I've listed. I shared her website. I shared her Twitter. I shared her Facebook. And if you go to her website, you're going to see all of her amazing blogs and all of her other social links because she's in a lot of different places. So be sure to follow her. Be sure to follow Lara and all the guests that we've had on here and everyone interacting. And um, I have another blog I'm going to be doing at 2 o'clock today focusing on SEO for uh, a friend of mine, Scott Schaaf. And so you're welcome to join me then. Otherwise, let me know when you guys are doing your stuff. And I would love to come on and participate as well. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks. Holly. Alrighty. You guys make it a great, a great Friday. <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Bye.